Hey, here we are again, Bible School, Writer of Ministries Bible School, in our last session number eight on spirit, soul, and body. And I'm so excited. We're making it through here. Amen. Praise Amen. God in Jesus' name. So we're excited. I'm excited, and God has some awesome teaching for us. We're going to thank the Lord for this session eight called Saving Your Emotions. Praise God in Jesus' name. We'll just put the Holy Spirit right into work with us. Father, we just thank you for the power of the Spirit of God in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving to us revelation, knowledge, illumination, and comparison in the Word of God and all the people God said. Yes, amen. amen. Saving your emotions. So let's go to First Peter chapter 2. And I would highly recommend that you read the whole chapter 2 and all of chapter 3 to really get a grasp on it. And start saying, can I do this? And you can do it in Jesus' name. Been there, done that. Praise God. All right. In verse 23. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Amen. I got news for you, man. When emotions are triggered, how many know they just skyrocket? And we call them landmines. You know, you, you, you look out there in the countryside and everything looks peaceful and you walk outside and you walk down the trail and you step on a landmine and kaboom, everything blows up. You didn't know what was there. And those emotions that are sitting inside you can just blow up like a landmine. So all emotions are triggered by thoughts and or events. To save emotions, we need to respond not react. That is going to be the teaching aspect of saving your emotions. Reaction is what everybody has been taught by the world. And that happens immediately because of sin. And the flesh functions in the sin. We know that. And so what you've got to do is learn to respond. And that takes work. How many know it's work? A man... I'm telling you, if I walked over and I took a plate of crown of thorns and I racked them down on somebody's head in here, are you going to leave them on there? Most likely you're going to rip them off and you're going to chew me out one side or the other and probably slap me or knock me down because it hurt. You didn't like what I did. You didn't want that on you. It caused you to bleed. But what did Jesus do? He didn't even take it off. He left it on him since the time he put it on him. He walked with a cross hanging hitting him in the head puncturing his head more with that thing on there falling down getting whipped and then did, finally they took it off him when he got up to the cross so we got to recognize hey things happen and how do you respond or do you react so here's what happens you have to locate all of the negative emotion makers Coming out of a negative reaction is more difficult than starting with a current response. Now here in the scripture, Jesus did not revile back. He did not react back against his environment. Instead, he responded, and you've got to think of this, of Jesus' behavior at his trial before Pilate. He didn't even open his mouth half the time. And he says, are you the Christ? And he said, you're the one that says so. Got pretty quiet in there. Now, does he think his mind's squirrely? Do you think his emotions are going high? He's got to have it together. And somebody comes up and says something to you and gets in your face and cusses and swears and maybe slaps you. What are you going to do? How are you going to respond? Now, this best part right here committed himself to God that judges righteously. And that is a difficult situation. And I put myself in that position, and I said, God, I have this situation, and I'm going to commit it into your hands. And, and I'm going to let you judge righteously. And God judged righteously. And I had to do what I had to do, because I didn't think I should, but God judged, and I had to do it. And I can tell you exactly what it is, but when you commit yourself... And it's okay, God, you're the one, you make the final decision. You're the judge, either right or wrong. And whatever the answer is, I'll do it. And he said, that's for you to do. Okay, I'm going to have to do it. It wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't making me happy, but I did it. Because he judged righteously. 
And so Jesus committed himself and let God judge out the whole thing. And that's important. People will say nasty things, do nasty things. Man, you want to retaliate? You just want to give them a good one. And that's not God's way. And that's not what we're supposed to do. So your emotions can get the best of you. How many know you got your emotions going as a riot, and then your body's getting all upset, and your mind's jumping in there, and your spirit now has got three to be to, to take care of, and then the devil goes, "Yeah, right. You remember what he did to you last year? Uh huh." And then all of a sudden you spill out all those poison from last year on top of everything else. Now you got four. Your spirit man had better be strong. Amen. I'm going to know how to play king of the hill. And you're on the top, and you got all these six kids trying to drag you down so they can be king of the hills. You think you're going to be able to do that? That's how your spirit's got to knock down that voice that's speaking to you. And you got to shut that thing down. You got to declare, and you got to make sure that you know who you're strong in. Oh boy, talk about a little work. Developing your spirit is not a play thing, folks. Amen. So, in Matthew chapter six, we'll flip back over to the New Testament here. <clears throat> It's a, it's, a, it's a walk that you have to learn to do. Amen? It just doesn't come overnight. But praise God, we can have some help. In Matthew chapter 6, let's look at verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Praise the Lord. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you mu not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature. And why take ye thought for the raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow will be cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the moral should take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Amen. So worry and anxiety comes, doesn't it? Take no thought and say, Don't do it. You must respond to an action biblically, the word of God, instead of how you feel. Those are emotions. And I'll tell you, emotions hit you hard. And people, when they do nasty things to one another, cause those emotions to stir. And man, you do that one more time and I'm out of here. Man, the devil will come along to make sure that happens one more time. Instead of saying, man, I'm telling you, I'm going to go pray and God is going to help me. I'm going to resolve this with him. Change. Amen. Okay. Now, anxious thoughts come to everybody. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5, and you know what it says. But let's just go read it anyway. Verse 7, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, 
because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Amen. So, command not to have any anxious thoughts. Hello, spirit persons, you righteous, awesome people of God. Speak the word of God. Command forth the worry to shut up. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Fear in the devil. Where does that fear come from? Let's go to 2 Timothy. Praise God in Jesus' name. Chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Amen? Fear and the devil. When fear comes, notice when I said when. When fear comes, we know that we are going to have to advance during the fear time. Everybody look at me and say, what? When fear hits me, I cower back. I'm so afraid. I'm frozen. Hello? When fear hits you, you go, oh yeah? I'm taking my step forward. I'm moving in on it. I don't have a spirit of fear, but I have power. And I have a sound mind. Therefore, I'm going to take the power and the sound mind and the love of God. I'm going to command that fear to go. Oh, Powerful, aren't we? Thank you, Jesus. So we respond, not react, we respond in faith. And that puts me further down the stream, amen? Ahead of the situation. Yes. Don't you love just a good challenge? Isaiah 61. Now you notice I'm hitting you up with emotional thoughts here. Hallelujah. He was waiting until we got to 61. So I'm here. Verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified, Talk about doing something when it hits you hard. Turn around and praise God. I've got news for you. I have been hit so hard it just threw me to the knees and just cry your eyes out. And I know it hurt. And I know what it felt like. And I've been there, done that, know how to praise God in the midst of it. And I said, God, I hurt so much, but I'm going to praise you. Tears rolling down my eyes. And I begin to, I don't think I got three words out when I said, oh, Lord, I love you. I praise you. And abandon. It all stopped. Where'd it go? God gave me peace right in the midst of tribulation. And I go, wow. When you don't have the worry thoughts, you're not the worrying. It disappeared. Where'd it go? Because you praised God in the midst of it. I responded correctly. Amen? So when heaviness comes, depression comes, all types of thoughts, put on the garment of praise. And it isn't going to be easy. It's not, it's not a light garment. You've got to pick that thing up, man. You've got to put it on. And you do not feel like it. Oh, sounds like emotions talking. But you're not going to let your feelings dictate your future, are you? You begin to sing to the Lord no matter how you feel. Amen? Man, I'm telling you, there are times you just want to mm, praise God, worship Him, sing to Him. Tell him how marvelous he is. Tell him how great he is. And all those little fleeing thoughts disappear. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. James chapter 1. You knew where that one was going. So let's get over there. Praise God. <clears throat> James chapter 1, verse 3. Knowing this. That's nice. Let's start with verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Got a kind of joy now, you know. Got a kind of joy. God told me, kind of joy. I've heard people talk. I got a kind of joy. I says, you're not joyful. You're just saying it. You got lip service, but you ain't got no heart with it. What is God saying? What is joy? It is an emotion. Instead of being negative, cranky, blah, 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 
Let's turn it around and get to the happiness, joyfulness, excitement that God is and change your attitude from heaviness to joy. Count it all joy. Change your, your negativity to all positive. Say thank you to Jesus. Okay? Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. See, you've got to grasp on to what God says and put it to work, and it works. I know. I mean, if it, you just can't get up here and preach the gospel without some experiences. And sometimes you wish you didn't have all them experiences. But bless God, it will help others. Amen? By the way that you are helped, you'll be able to help others. So, joy is something that you've got to make it happen. It does not come natural. You're not a natural person. You are a spiritual person. So talking about being upset, mad, you know, you just want to, you can't do that. You've got to make it happen. So you have to go physically laugh. It doesn't come naturally. We are to rejoice when everything goes wrong. We are responding to tribulation with emotion. We just make ourselves laugh. We must act on the word. We must obey the word. If we obey the word, the joy will manifest. Everybody stop and think about this. You will not get saved by thinking about it. You only get saved by saying the words. You will not get spirit-filled until you open your mouth and begin to speak with tongues. You have to do it. You will not get joy until you start laughing. And I've watched people sit on the floor and the Holy Ghost comes on. I said, the Holy Ghost is here with joy and laughter. Uh-huh. Waiting for what? You begin to laugh. Man, God will be right there and help you out. And while you're laughing, he'll turn around and heal things on you just like that. But until you do your part, he's just going to watch you sit. Say so it's an important part that you participate with, because, well, you're just in the flesh. You're just doing that on your own. Well, of course I am. But I'm doing it as under the Lord with joy instead of negativity. Say amen. amen. Romans chapter 5, please. And as you grasp onto it, you will see the Holy Spirit move for you. I'm telling you, I was up at a church, City Bible Church, and it was filled with about 6,000 people the day I was there. It was for pastors. And I get up to the front altar, and I hit the floor, and the laughter hit me. And I'm lolling, and I'm rolling, and I'm knocking into another guy, and we're sitting there laughing and just belly aching and just going for it, you know. And the preacher gets up to preach, and I'm still laughing. And they let me laugh. And I crawled on my hands and knees all the way up to the aisle till I could get up, man, because I was every five. And I was just perspiring with a happy face. And I go, I don't know. All I know is I got it, man. It hit me. Bam. And I was happy for a long time. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And Romans chapter 5 and verse 3, Spirit says here, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Oh, are you glad? Knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Man, you've got to get excited. Oh, no, that's starting to happen again. Oh, oh praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to get me out of it. See, that's the joy. You know what he's going to do for you. Say, thank you, Jesus. 1 Peter chapter 1. Isn't it great? When you start recognizing, see, a lot of this is why I've watched people, you know, oh, I love God. But when tribulation hits, man, they're belly aching and yelling and screaming at God because he didn't do anything. And you got it all backwards. Give, and it should be given to you. Praise, and God will fix you. Happy, and God will take care of it. You got to do your part first. Jesus, come into my heart. All right, you're saved. He didn't save me, and then I said, Jesus. You got to do your part. So when tribulations come, you're getting excited because God is helping you. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Hey, you're the one that ticked me off. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be in this. 
Oh, wait, 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 wait. What do I have to do? I get to love you fervently with pure love. Talk about getting excited. Because when you do that, God manifests. He's waiting for us. And you know why God doesn't show up? Because you don't do anything. Because you don't do anything, it doesn't going to happen. You want God to do it all. Come on, everybody, we're not lazy. Thank you, Jesus. We're not. He likes to participate. We do too. It's a covenant. You do one part, I'll do the other part. What you can't do, I can do. You can laugh. You can praise. Come on. It's getting quiet in here, Lord. All right, James chapter 1. <laughs> God is so good, isn't He? All right. We sin with our body. Okay? James chapter 1, verse 13. This is how you sin. Anybody like to know how? It's right here. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Now, how many people say that? God made me do it. God done that. I wouldn't have never done this. If that hadn't happened, don't ever say that. For God cannot be tempted with any evil. No evil. Nothing. Okay? Neither tempteth he any man. God does not teach you a lesson by the nature of the stuff you're going through. That is not him. Neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and it enticed. Then, when lust hath conceived, bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death or separation from God. Amen. Are you getting this? So, we sin with our bodies. How many know your bodies do some stupid things? All right. Tempted means there is a solicitation to sin. So, sin is offered. Okay? You're drawn away means to be lured like a fish. And you got that lure going down the stream, boy, and that fish comes and strikes at it because you tempted him, you enticed him to get it, he thought it was something good, and all he did is got hooked. If you do not repent of sin, it will bring death or separation of God, and God seems a long ways apart. So you got to stop and think of when you are in a position of emotional stress or distress, you can sin with your body and you say a lot of nasty words coming out of your mouth and you're blaming God for your problem because you lacked the knowledge, you lacked the incentive to go out and do what God told you to do before you, and it waited years till it finally caught up to you. And now you're trying to get it all fixed in one day. And it takes a little bit of effort for you and you don't know what buttons to push or how to operate it and you don't know what to do, it's going to take some time and then during that meantime you could lose the thing that you want because you don't know how to do it. That's why we're being trained so we can stay abreast of the facts that God's given us so you don't get in that position. Amen? Mm -hmm. Alright, so how would you like to learn how to stop from sinning since you know how to? Let us learn how to stop. Romans chapter 8, praise God. <sighs> Thank you Holy Ghost, isn't this good stuff? There's, every once in a while, you've got to teach somebody how to stop. Chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the what? The flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Simple as pie. Hang out with Jesus. Don't hang out with the devil, and you'll be fine. How many know that you've got to operate in that law of the life, in the spirit of life in Christ Jesus? That law is going to function. Now, everybody understands the law of gravity. You jump off a house, you don't go up. You go down. That's how the law of gravity works. When you hang out with Jesus, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, that law will keep you from sinning. Woo! Yeah, the law of the Spirit has authority over the body. Did you get that? The law of the Spirit has authority over the body. The law of the Spirit is Jesus. 
Jesus didn't sin in the flesh, and neither can neither do we. We don't have to. We can stop. Amen. Amen. It is so simple. And you guys, how can you say you do not sin? It's because I go like this. Jesus, yes. Do you want me to do this? No. Okay, I won't. But we don't ask. So we think it's okay. And we end up sinning. So the law of the life in Christ Jesus means you've got to be in communication. Everybody knows this new, sing, this new word. Are you in the loop? Will you please keep me in the loop, says Jesus. If you'll keep me in the loop, I'll help you stay free. Praise be to God. Simple, isn't it? Oh, I forgot. And if you forgot, Jesus, forgive me. You're forgiven. Thank you, Lord. Let's get to work. Okay. What do you want me to do? Oh, glad you asked me. <laughs> you got to stay in the loop. Amen. Okay. So, how do I keep this old body from doing the stuff? Amen. Anybody like to know? All right. Let's move over to Galatians chapter 2, please. We are going to get it good. And everybody knows the verse. Verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The I talking about your spirit. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So if my flesh is going to stand in the faith of Jesus the way he lived it. Because I'm dead. I'm crucified. I've slit my throat with Jesus spiritually. Therefore, my spirit, now has power over that flesh. And my flesh is going to live by the faith of the Son of God. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. And how many know that it's, I'm to offer my body as a reasonable sacrifice to God? What are you doing? God, this body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. Come live in a clean one. Because you washed it, cleansed it, and made it that way. So everybody goes, you know, Palm Sunday's coming up. And what did Jesus do when he got to the temple? He got off the donkey, got himself a little whip, and overturned the, chain, the, uh, the money changers. What did he do? He cleansed his temple. What about you? Are you going to cleanse yours? And you get it cleansed. He comes in and gets you saved. Keep it that way. Quit being a messy housekeeper. Keep it clean in the name of Jesus. Through the power of the blood. Amen? And you keep your temple clean, guess what's not going to sin? The flesh. Say thank you, Jesus. Amen. So I must declare, I have to say it out loud, I must declare, my body is available to God. Wow, isn't that powerful? How I present my body is how I think about my body. Are you going to put earrings in? Are you going to put tattoos on your body? Are you going to slice and dice it? Are you going to keep it washed and smell nice? And you're going to walk up to the Lord and say, I did what you said. I took my clothes. I washed them. I washed my body. I bathed myself so I could come into the house of the Lord. And I've been cleansed with the washing of the water. Now I'm going to get cleansed by the washing of the water of the Word of God. And I'm going to say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And you're going to cleanse the inside. And then you're going to come live in it. And we're going to stay that way. And the Holy Spirit is going to reside in this temple, which is made without hands. And God has already circumcised my heart. So you are allowed to be in here. We have a covenant, and the blood of Jesus washes me. And I'm going to stay that way. Isn't that a fun thing to do and say? Amen? So your body is a living service to God. Hallelujah. You guys are awesome. But you have to say, my body is made for you, God. Praise the Lord. What are you doing? You get, have you noticed that your emotions kind of like settled? Because the body's settling. The emotions and the mind are coming in alignment. Are you grasping this? Amen. 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. We've been there, said that. We'll do it again. For the what? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Have you noticed I've been saying it and saying that same scripture so you can get the revelation out of it every time I say it? So you can grasp it and say, that I've got to do. I cannot be having lust in my eyes. 
Cannot have lust of flesh. Cannot have pride of life in Jesus' name. Amen? So how do I live victorious? Since I know what I'm supposed to do, the voice of the flesh is the pride of life. You don't have to do that. What makes you think? Who do you think they are? Who's talking? Spirit, soul, body, four sources of wisdom, earthly, sensual, devilish. Come on. The voice of the flesh is the pride of life. The lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh. These three things is the voice of your flesh. And that's why I said you cut your head off and live, man. Your flesh will do it all. But, man, your spirit, man, goes, hey! Just like the dog whisper, jerking that thing. That dog goes, yes. Your spirit grabs a hold of your flesh and emotion. Hey, knock that off. Isn't it great? You know to do it. But doing it, it's the greatest thing in the world. How many are going to do it when things happen? Man, think about a spiritual growth. Praise Jesus. Amen. Now, Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2. We've read that already. We're going to go back and read it some more. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Come on. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Good news, right? You have authority over your body. Praise God. Condemnation, condemnation is a flame to continue to lust. It's a motivator. It will, it will not stop lust. Condemnation tells you that you cannot do anything about the sin problem. You are doomed to lusting in the flesh. The law of sin and death has a voice called condemnation. However, the law of the Spirit has authority over the body. Two voices. Law of sin and death, do it and you cannot stop. Or the law of the Spirit, you can stop it. Which one are you going to listen to? You are to glorify God in your body. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 6. This is powerful scripture. I'm here grasping onto this. I know you are. Praise God in Jesus' name. Verse 14. 1 Corinthians 6, 14. And God hath both raised up the Lord... And will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that you are bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. So you are to glorify God in your body. Amen? You are to declare Galatians 2.20, I am crucified. It's not I that liveth, but it's Christ that liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh... I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 is telling you something. Amen? So that, that verse, Galatians 2.20, is the answer to victory over the flesh. Your body is literally dead. Lust does not affect a dead man. Are you grasping that? When you know it has no effect on you, it doesn't bother you. And I say to people that I know are walking in the Lord really strong. So does the devil bother you about your gambling problem? What? I don't gamble. I don't have a problem. See, you're dead to that. Does the devil bother you your emotions? Oh, yeah. You're not dead. Mm. I guess I'm not dead enough. Well, declare you are and stop. Simple as that. Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. From that. Say, thank you, Jesus. Romans 6 6 is my favorite. Oh, yeah, you could hardly wait till I got there. Thank you, Jesus. Knowing this, bells and whistles just went off, right? Ding, 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 ding. What is it? My spirit's supposed to know something. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. How many know Galatians 2 20? With him means the same as, as if it was him and me sitting on that same cross. When he died, I died. Knowing this, do you know it? Do you have it inside your spirit that the body of sin might be destroyed and henceforth we should not serve sin for he that is dead is freed from sin. Woo! So I am crucified. I don't sin. I'm dead to it. 
So you can get up in front of a whole bunch of people and testify and say, I don't sin. And they'll look at you like, what are you talking about? I'm dead to it. Because they haven't understood. And they don't practice it. But you do. Say, thank you, Jesus. Galatians chapter 6, we, we read it again. I keep repeating them because it means something more and more, doesn't it? Praise God. Come on. Verse 14, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. All that's in the world is the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And I am crucified to the world, that lust, and it is crucified to me. Double dead. Yes and amen. We are dead to the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And when you stop and grasp this, when you know you're dead, what does your emotions got to do with a thing when it's dead? Say amen. We are dead to it, and it is dead to us. This is how we mortify the deeds of the flesh. We just declare it, our body, verbally, I am dead. We mortify the flesh by keeping it under subjection always. The dog starts to move, you jerk his leash, and he's back in alignment with you. You snap your finger, you go, hey! Your body starts to go out, and your spirit man goes, hey! If you don't, it's going to continue doing what it's doing. And you say, no, no, I'm dead. Dead people don't get up and move around. You're dead. Are you grasping this? James chapter 3, we talked about the four sources of wisdom. Let's grasp that again. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Are you guys grabbing this? Verse 13, who was a wise man and endured with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation, his lifestyle, his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. For this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. So the enemy, the reason, and the flesh will continually try to tell you they still have power in your life. Say, triers are liars. But they'll come up behind you when you're not thinking about it and try to sneak in. The body tries to tell you that it's still alive. The devil and your body lie to you. Don't think that your body doesn't lie. Satan tries to tell you that you, he's still in control. Just command the lies and the junk bound and command them to shut up in the name of Jesus. You have got to identify where is the source of this voice, this wisdom that's speaking to me. And as soon as you have developed your spirit because you're praying in tongues and commanding down the thoughts of the lust of the eyes, pride of life, pulling down strongholds and every evil thing and all the stuff coming against you, pretty soon it's be quiet. Knock it all down. Now you can hear God. Okay, Holy Spirit, let's go on. Let's read the Bible now. And you'll get the voice of the Lord speaking to you. Amen. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 14 and 15, which we've already quoted it, I am crucified to the world, and the world's crucified unto me, double dead. Remember that scripture? Amen. Command your flesh to shut down just by declaring you are dead. Man, I just got to have that. I just want that. No, I'm dead to that. And you'll see a change. And I mean, it will take a little bit of time, but you start doing it, and all of a sudden you'll realize, I don't have to do it anymore. I'm dead. Say, thank you, Jesus. Come on. You know it. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We'll quote that one. Praise God in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> That's one of your favorites. Verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. And every high thing is also itself against the knowledge of God and bringing it to captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Pull down strongholds and anything that is opposed to God. So when you say to you these things, lust, thoughts, whatever it is, you command them down. You say, I can't afford it. Command it down. You've got to declare, God is blessing me. I can have whatever I want. 
And I want to further the kingdom of God. And not whatever you want lustfully, whatever you want that's going to be spiritually good for you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Matthew chapter 12. You realize that your emotions don't have a chance. Are you getting this? I hope you do, praise God, because that's what shuts it down. When you're dead, it doesn't speak. It can't. It can't. It's dead. So thank you, Jesus. All right, Matthew chapter 12, this is what Jesus did to break the devil. This is how he did it, so that's how we do it. Verse 28 and 29, Jesus speaking, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, if Jesus cast out devils by the Holy Spirit, then I have to have the Holy Spirit to cast out devils. Then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Obviously, because he's using the Holy Spirit and the devil's being cast out, the Holy Ghost showed up, therefore the kingdom of God has come. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man? And then he will spoil his house. So devil, I command you bound by the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. You foul, unclean devil that's speaking to me of lust, I break your power and command you to go. I am dead to that. Simple, isn't it? So you bind the devil, command it not to manifest or speak or act out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Two more scriptures. And we know that we have to cast down reasons that are against God. Amen. Amen. Even high things or barriers. I can't do that. Who told you that? Well, because I didn't go to school. Oh, the education's telling you you can't. Why don't you get some education? Oh, I can't afford it. Now you're giving me why I can't. So would you call that a high thing that says you cannot attain it? It's too high for you and you can't get over the barrier? Well, pull it down. Break it down. Command it to go. Use the Word of God, which is a hammer that breaks it into pieces. Say, so thank you, Jesus. Pull those down. Cast down your imaginations in Jesus' name. Well, I can't do so. Don't say what you can't do. Say what God can do through you. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is, so, this is my ending scripture, I think. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I like it, don't you? Amen. I'm telling you, this scripture saves me all the time. How about you? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I know what you did. I saw. I know what kind of a nasty person you were. Excuse me, but that man is dead. I'm a new creation now. And those things, as far as I'm concerned, are as far as the east is from the west, as though it never happened. So if you bring it up to me again, you're talking to the devil, and I won't speak to you. I am a new creature. Old things are passed away. They are no longer here. They're dead. Behold, I have become new. You don't look like it. I don't care what you see, think, feel, taste, touch, or feel. I know who I am in Christ. That's what I am. Enjoy me. Amen. Amen. So you are a new creation. So act like a new man in Jesus Christ. A new man does not know what it's like to be hurt. A new man does not know what it's like to get angry. A new man does not know what it's like to be bitter. A new man does not know how to doubt, etc., etc., etc. You get this? We put on Christ. We pray in tongues and hear from God. We are free in Christ as that new creation in the name of Jesus. Amen? I am glad you got the power of the Spirit of God has given you revelation, has given you that knowledge of God, has given you that illumination and comparison in the Word of God that you are a new person and those emotions are over with, aren't they? We're excited. I know I am. Let's pray. Father, we just give you praise and glory for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We thank you, Father God, you've taught us and now we can take the Word of God and put it into action. We are free because we're in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from sin and death. I thank you, Father God. I'm going to put these words into work. And I will become excited for you. And I thank you for it. And all the people of God said, 
Yes, and amen, and amen. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, everybody. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. I want to take this opportunity to invite you to become a partner with our ministry. As you give your seed offering every month of $25 or more, we're going to send you an awesome DVD. Our DVDs will include how to develop your spirit, uh, how to heal the sick, how to prophesy, how to give a word of knowledge, etc. We're going to do an awesome training and revelation knowledge that you're going to get from this ministry. So we want to pray for you as you pray for us. And when we have healing explosions around the world, we're going to invite you to participate and become a healing team member. Contact us with our, on our website at writer.org. God bless you. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at writer.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Writer.